Okay. Great, thank you, uh, Tony. Welcome this evening to the January 19th, 2021 regular board meeting of the Fairport Central School District. Uh, I'm Tim Sliz, president of the school board, and we will start the meeting this evening with our athletic director, Fritz Killian. He has some athletes that he would like to recognize. Fritz. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody, and good evening. It is my honor and privilege to recognize our Fall Scholar Athlete Award team winners. In this current year, our student athletes on these teams are engaged in a unique educational experience of in-person and virtual instruction. And as we move on to the next slide, you can see the criteria for the New York State Public High School Athlete Scholar Athlete that is handed down by our State Athletic Association. With the support of their teachers, their families, their coaches, and their own individual goals of each student athlete, our student athletes worked extremely hard to do their very best in the classroom. As we move on to the next slide, I'm very pleased to honor our varsity cross country team coached by Sean Van Laken. They were section five champions this year. And also Kalen Reuter was an individual section five champion and a special congratulation to the remainder of our postseason award winners, John Farrell, Nick Ferry, Zach Ditzel, Jack Salzman, Jake Tomitz, Connor Quimby, and Ben Schwab. Next slide, we will honor our girls cross country team. They were named section five champions. Special post season award winners go to Ari Reebok, Jessica Suter, Hannah Kessler, Elizabeth Fish, Mary Kate Fish, Maggie Nobes, Emily Leo, and congratulations to coach Christy Moore, who was named coach of the year. Our next slide brings us to varsity field hockey. Not only was the team section five finalists, but they showed tremendous improvement throughout the year and finished extremely strong. Special postseason award honors go to Jillian Ambler, Margaret Greta, Caitlin Hammond, Jada Burnett, and Megan Woolley. Congratulations. Our next slide brings us to the girls varsity golf program coached by Terry Clark. We are very proud of Harper Dittman and Abby Sakura who qualified for the sectional tournament, and also Abby Bradford and Kerrigan Lansdowne, who are league qualifiers. Congratulations to the team and coach Terry Clark. Our next team we're going to be honoring is girls varsity gymnastics, coached by Alicia Baum. They finished third overall in the Section 5 tournament. Congratulations to Elise Westrich and Sarah Lego, who qualified for the state tournament which will be held later this year. Congratulations to our boys varsity soccer program coached by Bill Teasdale. They were section five finalists this year. Congratulations to our postseason award winners, Caden Brunken, Jude Rohana, Aiden Fish, Kevin Clifford, Garrett Kachera, and Miles Palmer. Congratulations to our girls varsity soccer team coached by Tom Natale. They were Section 5 champions, and a special congratulations to our postseason award winners, Lillian Hicks, Katie Diem, Kayla Maxwell, and Claudia Giambrone. Congratulations to our girls varsity swimming and diving program. Ella Guilfoyle was the Class A sectional swimmer of the meet, as she was an individual sectional winner in the 200 IM and 100 back, and Sophie Mewison, was the Class A Diving Sectional Champion for this fall. Special congratulations to Abby Tucker, Lena Galagos, Becky Park, and Lauren Radell for their postseason award honors. Our girls varsity tennis team were Division I Monroe County champions and Section 5 finalists. Congratulations to Uliana Nadelko, who was a Class A one individual singles champion, and to the rest of our postseason award winners, Sophie Amadori, Paige Harmon, Gwen Levinowitz, Abby Smith, Riley DeRoe, Lily Buckley, Laney Cole, Gwen Burns, and Coach of the Year, Terry Metcalf. <clears throat> and as we go to our last slide, I would like to personally thank the Board of Education, our entire staff at Central, in the Fairport Central School District, in the community for their support this fall. And it's also my pleasure to announce that 100% of our fall teams achieved New York State Scholar 
athlete team recognition. Great job, Red Raiders, and thank you for a great fall. Thank you, Fritz. Um, obviously, this was a very unique situation and the fact that we were able to get these sports and, and these teams to be able to play some games, obviously not the same number as they normally would have played because of the, the restrictions, but it was great that the kids had a chance to get out there and really play and, and, and exhibit their passion. And, and their, their uh, scholar athletes are just uh, icing on the cake. Yes, agreed. And thank you for everyone's support. Uh, we could not run these programs without you. And again, these awards, it's student athlete, the student is first, and they represented our community with class and pride on the field and also in the classroom. Thank you. Thanks, Fritz. Having, having worked with many of those kids in sixth grade, I, I can attest to, to their uh, dedication. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to call the official or, uh, meeting to order. And with that, there are, I believe there are no public comments this evening. So we will go right into the approval of the agenda. Um, if I could have a motion to approve the agenda. And you'll have to please uh, say it orally because I can only see four people on my screen at a time. So, so moved, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Second. Second, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Marty Cardona will be coming late. She is at another school function uh, that ends at seven. So she will be joining us at that time. Next, we go to uh, Jackson Dietz, our student advisor report. Jackson, it's nice to see you without a mask. And it's, it's uh, nice to see our kids back. And, and um, I look forward to all that you have to report to us. Thanks, Mr. Sliz. So, um, Fairport High School is very busy right now. In the past few weeks, we have had winter sports start up. The semester is, come to, is coming to a close and COVID testing has resumed. So students have continued to do well with the safety measures both in and out of school, evidenced by our extremely low on-site positivity rate of zero this past week. Students have also been positively engaged in our district's mission of culturally responsive education. <clears throat> At the Fairport High School, we have done recorded book readings, weekly announcements from our building and student leaders, and have had several positive social media engagements around the topic of culturally responsive education. Students are very passionate about this work and they are particularly interested to partake in these events. So as we move forward into the second semester, students have many achievements to look forward to, including the AP and Regents exams, college acceptances, and graduation. Though I am very excited to transition to American University in Washington, DC, where I will be studying US foreign policy and national security. I, like many of my peers, want to make sure I can soak up all I can from Fairport schools and the Fairport community. Um, so thank you and I'd be happy to take any questions from the board or central admin. Any questions or comments for Jackson? Yeah, Jackson, this is, uh, this is Damon, Mr. Buffum. That is so impressive that uh, you're going to uh, Washington University to study uh, your field of uh, interest. That's, that's awesome. I trust you'll, I'll trust you'll take your, your Fairport values and apply it to national policy. Thank you. <laughs> Jackson, obviously a lot of the seniors are starting to hear back from their different schools and, and I'm sure it's a, a lot of excitement going on in the, in the halls when the people come in and say, oh my gosh, I was just early acceptance. I know my niece out in the West Coast, she got early acceptance to Ithaca College and she was just thrilled beyond her, her years. So she can't wait, uh, especially when it's your, your, the school that you really hoped for and you worked for and, and like you, you got into that, that dream school and it's now reality. So it, it, it's an attestant, it, it's a testament to all that you are doing and have done. So congratulations on that. Jackson, you mind if I ask a question? Does the of board course. mind if I ask a question? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, really, you're on the ground floor with your classmates um, coming up on a half a year in the hybrid model. What's what's the feeling tone? I know you mentioned it in the past, and I know we're doing an excellent job <clears throat> with all the mitigating factors. Um, but you know, just in plain language, how's it how's it going? What's working? What's not? You know, I think overall the whole the whole pro, the whole plan is working, and I think you know the concern at this point among students is not a concern of safety. You know, it's a concern of you know social interaction. You know, I think you know 
walking through the hallways, there's some people who I saw last year that I'm never going to see again, just based on how we have our plans right now. And, you know, I think that is a, that's a little bit of a daunting fact for some people. And, um, you know, even if you weren't exactly friends with some of these people, it's definitely interesting thinking that you might never see them again, just because of the way that our schedules have worked this year. Um, so I think, um, you know, doing everything, you know, that the board can do, um, building administrators and central admin can do to just increase the, our kids' ability to interact with one another. That, that's the most helpful thing, I think, at this point. You know, I think safety-wise, students have done a really good job. Obviously, building leaders and teachers have done an amazing job. So I think, um, you know, really with that social aspect, if, as, you know, trying to make sure that we can connect with one another. Are we, are we managing... For lack of the right word, the stress of it all, you know, um, you know, you're two days a week, um, you know, you know, and for the most for the most part, you know, how are classmates handling that, you know, the academic components and so on? Yep. So I think um, for seniors, it's um, it's definitely a little tough right now, um, you know, between the college balance and the academic balance um, working together. Um, that's, that's definitely tough having to, you know, juggle all those things. But, um, you know, I think for everyone else, it's, it's pretty tough some, sometimes having to learn in the virtual environment. Um, I know you guys talked about that at workshop the other day too. Um, and, you know, I think some kids are doing really well with that and others are not. So, you know, I, you know, I think just keeping, you know, keeping in mind that, you know, that, that, that model is not going to work for even some of our really strongly um, performing academic students. Thank you very much. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. You did a great job with the cold calls here. Jackson, I, I'm going to ask something of you maybe next November or October uh, at our meeting, if, if you would be, and I'll remind you, if you would be willing to touch base with us during our meeting, just to let us know, because you're going to be an American university where there are going to be, be people from all over the world. Um, and everyone in the world is experiencing this virus in some capacity. It would be very curious for me, after a couple months of being at American, um, how, how were other kids handling this? How, would, how did their last year of school go? And, and it'd be very interesting to see how this all played out throughout the country and throughout the world. And, and uh, I'd be very curious to know how that how that happens and, and get your feedback and your your interpretation of that. I think it would be really interesting for us. So thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you guys. One of the one of the requests I would have is you know and it's awesome that you you know you, you really come prepared and you offer a ton of value on these calls. I appreciate that. What I would like to know about is the kids. You know, it's nice to hear about the kids that have an established plan and they're going to a college. Um, and they're going to be studying a certain program, but there's also a, a, a ton of kids that are doing something different. They're going to be going off to trade schools, or they're going to be going off to military, or they're going to be going off to do different jobs. Um, and I realize that you can't like interview everybody, especially in this environment, but just give us a feel for what everybody's doing, um, or just the, the broader section of Fairport, right? What are those kids... You know, I know, again, like a lot of kids are, are have an established college they're going to go to with a program, but what about those kids that are doing something different, right? And that's a very viable path as well. I'd like to be interested to hear what, what their plans are. That'll be something I can talk, I can cover it um, either the next workshop or next board meeting. Thank you for Great. mentioning that. Great. Thanks. Super. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, this comes to uh, President's report, and it's more not necessarily a report, but there are a couple things I'd like to say. And first, I'd like to thank Peter Forsgren for three and a half years of leading the school board, a uh, year and a half longer than he was expected to. <laughs> um, so he resigned on the 4th of January, and I was appointed the president of the school board. And right away, people wanted to know if Peter was okay. And, and yes, Peter is fine. It's just that it's been the, the um, history of the board that every two years, the presidency and vice presidency rotate so that one person isn't saddled with the extensive work that goes into leading the district and being the board president. And it also allows for all the members to have an idea of, of how all of this works. 
And so, Peter, thank you for extending your two years into almost four years, so almost double the time. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I can uh, follow in your footsteps and, and be at least half of, of the president you were, and, and I'm working at it. Ariel will attest to that today in the past couple of days. So another person I would like to thank also is Judy O'Leary Sargent, and I don't know if Judy is watching. I would hope that she's enjoying her new life down in North Carolina. Judy resigned on the 8th of January, and I would like to thank her for her years on the board, especially for her devotion to our community, both as a parent and as a representative. Um, her expertise in the mental health field brought all sorts of wonderful ideas and, and, and passions to the board and to the district. Um, and I'd also like to, to thank her for her camaraderie on the board. Um, we all learned from each other and, and I learned greatly from, from Judy. And I hope that as we continue on this, this journey, we will uh, make sure that she and her ideals are part of, of what we do. Um, I was thinking of this the other day, we're about halfway through this very unique school year. And we hear from residents, we hear from teachers, we hear from neighbors and students. And there are a lot of emotions. Some are very upset with the fact that kids aren't in school five days a week. Some are upset with the fact that, that uh, they have to wear masks. Others think that things are going great. Others wish they could be in three days a week. Um, it's a lot of unknown and it's a lot of discomfort. But I think back to the district and back in 1956, here I go in my history lesson. 1956, Johanna Perrin Elementary School was open for the first time. Before that school was open, there were 14 schoolhouses throughout the town and each one was run independently. It really wasn't a central school. So I can imagine the anxiety when, when the decision to build an elementary K-6 building where West Avenue School was the high school and you had people out in Egypt who were at the two room schoolhouse or out on, on uh, Wilkinson Road, the one room schoolhouse and up and down um, Turk Hill Road where two of the schoolhouses still stand. And I imagine the anxiety there, um, I'm sure residents and parents, the fact that now their ch children have to ride a bus to school into the big village, I'm sure that was daunting. Then in 1959, when, when Minerva Deland was built and that was the high school, um, we now had a junior high, which was the old West Avenue school, which is the former high school. So now we had an elementary school, a junior high and a high school. And I'm sure that created all sorts of anxieties. And then you had to redistrict. And then in the late sixties, early seventies, we were building uh, a house a day in Fairport and Parenton. So we had three to 350 starts, housing starts for three or four years in a row. I know when I went to kindergarten, my mother was a little nervous because our kindergarten class was meeting the third floor of the Methodist church on West Church Street because the kindergarten rooms up at Brooks Hill hadn't been finished yet. And there was a lot of anxiety of who's gonna bust into them. So it's, it's, it's a testament to who we are as a community. We've had a lot of, of change. We've had a lot of uncertainty. We've had a lot of unknown, but we've always persevered. And actually, I think every time we come into one of these and face these challenges, we come out stronger, a stronger community. What's better for our children? Our children are, are experiencing some unique learning experiences right now. I know some of the teachers I've spoken to, they have six and seven kids in a class. They said they've never known their kids as well as they do this year, because you can connect with kids when you have seven or eight in a class. Then when they get together on their Wednesday Zooms, when they can see everybody and they can interact. So it's, it's unique, it's different, but I, I'm, I'm confident that we all will become better for this and we will find new, new challenges, but we'll also find some new activities and new ways of learning that we never really knew about. And now we're finding that, wow, there's some really exciting things that are going on here. So on that note, I'd like to thank our students. They've chugged right along and they're just putting their, they're going full force as you heard from Jackson. Yeah, it's different, but we keep going forward. Our teachers, our cafeteria workers, our transportation, our cleaners, our custodial staff, our bus drivers, our building and grounds. I'd like to thank all of our administrators, both in the schools and in the district office and at Balmer Place, our parents who have gone above and beyond, our grandparents, our aunts, our uncles, our neighbors, our daycare workers. Uh, it's, it's been a unique road and we're still traveling it. 
I know today watching the news, the numbers of the virus are starting to plateau again. They're starting to level off. They're getting a little better. Listening to the governor's report today on the budget. I'll just stop there. Not quite sure what that's going to be, um, but we'll manage it. We'll get through this. We will continue to strive to do the best for our kids in this district. Thank you. Turn it over to Brett. Thank you, Mr. Sliz, and thank you, Mr. Forsgren, once again. It's, it's been a pleasure working closely with you. Um, and of course, um, Dr. O'Leary Sargent was an amazing part of our, our board for a few years, and she made important contributions. So um, starting out with notes of appreciation. Um, I also would like to say thank you to our staff. Um, and there, there are too many to name, but a lot of this doing business differently would not come to fruition if it wasn't for the great efforts of our staff, whether you're on the ground with, with students as a paraprofessional, a classroom teacher, I'm working in the transportation department, food service, um, you know, um, the, the gifts that we're seeing, the talented um, staff um, continually applying their craft every single day. It, it's amazing how they do it in creative and telling ways. So um, I, I agree with you, Mr. Sliz. Um, so thank you for, for mentioning that. I'd like to congratulate our, our student athletes. Um, they're more than just athletes, they're academic scholars. And um, consistently, year in, year out, there's a showing of academic excellence and equipment to what we know what is important is, is their, their readiness for the next level. So um, that's a tribute to the high expectations and standards that we have. But every year it's, it's seems to be, if not every team, um, at least, um, at least every team, you know, um, if not, um, you know, it speaks to their, their commitment and seeing the big picture. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a report that's pretty much going to be, capturing, definitely not giving the justice of what every topic deserves, but it's going to speak to our district priorities, you know, and uh, I really feel it's important that we report on our priorities and be accountable to them as we as we move along. Um, today is the National Day of Racial he um, Healing. You know, it's always on the cusp of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's observed every year on the Tuesday following uh, um, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and it, it speaks to this idea of healing. And I've said it frequently, and I'll continually say it as a nation, and it's as evident as, uh, as sure as the sky is blue, that we need to heal. There needs to be re reconciliation. And all the things that we accomplish in our great society in America will not come to fruition. We will not be able to celebrate them fully until we acknowledge our past and where we have been. And we've heard it over and over again, not just this year, but in previous years. You know, I've been a superintendent. I'm, I'm coming um, I'm in the middle of my, my sixth year. And every year, um, this imperative comes to light. And um, I, I believe it is in the healing. And I want to share with you a, a video that speaks to the things that we're doing in our schools. Hi, I'm Dominic Monticelli here, very proud principal of Minerva Deland, here with Jada Cracker Hi. and Jackson Rucker. Um, I wanted to share a, a quick overview with you about some of the work we're doing here uh, culturally. Um, these two are some of our, our leaders in the building, and we put together a student leadership team in the summertime to, you know, to grow our culture, to understand each other, understand one another, and identify one another. So do you guys want to share a little bit more about the student leadership team and what we're doing and why we're doing it? Excellent. Sure. Uh, so our student leadership team started in the summer and we really just got together to kind of put heads together and see what's going on in the world and the school and how we can make it a better place. Thank you. Um, a lot of the conversations that we had were about um, accepting and including other cultures and belief systems well said. In general, we're trying to understand each other better so we can all be better allies for one another, no matter what your uh, race is or religion or whatever uh, whatever your culture is, understanding one another. And we're moving in the direction of creating like a logo, an image, 
and also working on how we're going to take this message and the work we're doing as a group of about 20 people to the larger school. So that's where we're going with it. Uh, we're standing in front of one of our uh, bulletin boards here. You know, uh, this when we made bulletin board in, back in the, in the summertime, really we're trying to celebrate each other's cultures, uh, a black culture, black history in general, but not just in, in February, but year round. Uh, you do have to understand that there's going to be other minority students and uh, underrepresented groups coming to a white-based majority school, so they're not going to be, you know, obviously have the same view as they would. So it's good to keep in mind that you have to make uh, this uh, school for uh, as long as they're going to stay as comfortable as possible throughout the next experience. And this is one of the ways to uh, go towards that membership. Yeah, well, there's been various activities that the school has been and that I have helped the reps, like such as having going to the boards around that, you know, hit different topics and that really like express like detailed information about um, just different diverse groups, you know, can range from uh, ethnic groups, uh, black, white, Hispanics, what type of successes they had. And then also we've had uh plan for each month that had different topics as well such as like history month we work on like talking about current events and um like talking about what's going on in the news today and how we can like work on uh improving like racial equality in our school district in our in our community and also we're right now we're writing a book about how to become activists in their community. So that it's gonna really help us out too. Like it's took, taken me a while to like fully see how like looking towards racial equality and um, and like dismantling like white supremacy in our society is really important to me after like seeing it on the news with George Floyd. But I re I'm really doing this like because I want to make Fairport a better community and more um, open to all races, genders, and like sexualities. And because I think our school is very like it's it's a lot of white people, and I think there's a lot we can improve on as a community. Um, so I'm really working to like change that. You know, our, our students always speak their truth and they do a wonderful job of um, expressing what's in their hearts. So um, this is National Day of Healing Week. Um, there's a number of activities occurring as you saw. Um, Board Vice President Cardona right now is with Peary and a group of Fairport educators in a community circle on this very topic. And we'll definitely be talking more about this as we move forward. Um, this is not anything new. If, you, if you've been in Fairport, it's deeply embed, embedded in our DNA, meeting students where they are, making sure that we listen to their stories and be intentional about serving their interest and their needs and bringing their voice out. It is the work. It's not an extra piece. It's just highly intentional and focused. I think uh, Mr. Sliz mentioned our, it is budget season. The interesting part about this budget season is, you know, how do you build a budget considering the impacts of a pandemic? And there's still lots of unknowns, but what's not unknown is the board has very specific goals and expectations about how to move forward when we do build our, build our budget, when we do tell our story that will be reflected in, with the budget that we eventually develop in public. I'm looking forward to doing that with the board. As Mr. Sliz said, there um, was an executive budget today with, from, from the governor. You know, not much was shared. We don't have numbers yet. Um, as we go forward into the next several weeks, that will unfold. But there's urgent questions. And I, and I think you see those up there. Um, the urgent questions are, when will we know whether we'll be threatened? Um, will the threatened 20% school cuts will happen. When will that happen? Will it be 20%? Will it be 15%? Will it be 10%? Um, you know, the governor has talked about a 
cut to school aid. Um, in Fairport, that equates at its at its um, estimate at approximately eight million dollars. When will we know if money withheld will be paid? To date, money has not been withheld on our payments. Um, there is some 1920 money that we're still waiting on, but otherwise payments have been made. But um, as we continue to go through, um, we're we're all curious about that looming projection that the governor has made. With uncertainty over federal funding, will budget planning be contingent upon further federal assistance? So these are the questions that are in our mind in the forefront. And as we talk about how do we pay for our program, we have many incredible things occurring in our district. Um, our priorities are well stated through our budget. You can see just by this chart, we rely on our state aid. About $42 million of our $135 million budget is state aid. So when you're talking about a reduction of uh, the magnitude of 20%, that will be um, impactful. Um, so I, I think that's why we're all sort of waiting with bated breath and we're waiting to see how this unfolds. Regarding the budget and its outlook, um, it's still unsettled. As Tim said in the beginning, we're, we didn't know what quite to say about it, but for the short term projections are not nearly as dire as the governor uh, originally reported. That's good news. We see uh, um, um, our, our sales um, taxes or our taxes, excuse me, in general that the state is collecting um, have, have been better. It's still below what it has been in the past as we'll be talking about. And they're saying that our actual um, taxes that we collect will not get to the rate that it is um, currently or last year's rate and, until another four years. But for the short term, it's not as dire. Um, the long-term projections, the economic downturn um, and its impact on revenues has created a deficit anywhere from 10 to $12 billion. And that's the most recent projection. I know the governor has been saying 15. Um, you know, that's still significant, but it's not 15. Um, it's not as bad as Mr. Stevens would say. Um, this um, is at least... As bad as the gap experienced during the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009, I was talking to our, our assistant superintendent for business today, and he was speaking about, you know, we have experienced gaps before, and we have received stimulus checks before, you know, in our in our in our very recent past. Um, so we've been here before. We've been able to get through it by pointing to advocacy and making sure that you know we're making our budget a uh, reflection of our priorities. Any forthcoming federal aid will be a Band-Aid. It's a short-term fix um, from the shutdown. We um, know that that will impact us for the short term and the long term. But there's been some encouragements, as I alluded to. Um, sales tax revenues have performed better than projected by the Department of Budget. That's good news. Some federal assistance has been appropriated and we continue to learn more. Prospects for more federal funding have been dramatically um, improved with the advent of a democratic majority in the US Senate who historically been friendly to public education because they um, see it definitely as um, our role is to, to support our students in our public schools. Um, these are some really key indicators that I know that some of you who have been on the board know bode well for public education. We have points of advocacy. We know that this is gonna be a multi-year advocacy effort. We know that assistance will be needed for multiple years to move us through this phase. Like I said, it's gonna take about three to four years for us just to recover, to get at revenue that we saw last year in 2019-20. Schools need to help in uh, offset or getting payment for the extraordinary costs um, from this pandemic. So we're hoping that the federal government will be able to help with that. And state states need to make sure that they advocate for the relief from the federal government. And, and we'll be making sure our points of advocacy are, are heard in, in Albany, but also at the federal level. And I know our Board of Education is highly involved. More to talk about the budget. This is one of my favorite topics. I'm pulling out my old social studies self, like Mr. Sliz, um, Return to no Normalcy, 1920s, Warren G. Harding. Um, I'm speaking to 
you know, I call them benchmarks um, behind each one of these. There are numbers, there's data, there's facts. Community infection rates is one and hospitalization rates. We know community infection rates is, are below 7%. Um, you know, a few months back, we would have been, you know, appalled by those numbers. But from where we've been, you know, that's, that's a, we're bending the curve. It's starting to go downward trend. But what's not happening, though, and I think this is an important piece, is the hospital hospitalization rates or ICU rates, um, those have not lessened. Um, we're still at maximum capacity in our hospitals and we're watching that carefully. So even though we're bending the curve, um, the hospitalization rates are, are something that we're watching and continually getting guidance from the Department of Health, um, from the State Department of Health and the Monroe County Department of Health, and we'll be following our medical experts as we continue to move along. For example, distancing and masking has not changed. We know that the, three, the six feet distancing piece impacts how many people or students we can have in our environments. Um, if you go to three feet, we would need guidance and support from our Department of Health on that matter. Um, we don't have that yet. And masking is definitely a very important component of any type of transition plan. Vaccine progress, we've all seen and heard about that. There's just not enough vaccines out there. I think maybe a week from now, it might be a different story, two weeks, three weeks. Um, they're talking about 14 weeks until total vaccination is achieved. And that brings us to May. Right? Um, we know that vaccina vaccination is a key component to bringing us back. And that's only groups 1A and group 1B. Correct. There's not a plan for students. Um, it's just not in the near future. And that's a whole other conversation. But in order for us to bring our schools back fully, we need to see progress on vaccinations. Um, also tied to this, which is not included in here, SED guidance and the transportation guidance. Because right now, the transportation departments of New York State um, has a restrictive number based upon health and safety concerns and standards. Um, and to date, to their credit, it's worked. Um, so we'll be waiting guidance on that. And of course, We'll be looking for staff and community perspectives as we move along. Um, lots of questions on this slide, but I want the board to know and I want the community who's out there listening to know that these will be the, the, the pillars or the benchmarks that we'll um, be monitoring as we move along. I will be talking to staff and community. I know the board will be making it a priority to understand how these benchmarks are impacting any type of return to school. but. For the immediate future, um, we don't, do not have an answer. I know people want an answer, um, but we're waiting for these um, benchmarks per se to evolve and hopefully we'll have more clarity in the very near future. Um, all topics here that deserve its own agenda and night, unfortunately I don't have that time, but we'll be talking more about this in the near future. Welcome Mrs. Cardona, I'm glad you're here and I hope that you found your your peer session with the community, very helpful. She loves it when I put her on the spot like that. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the honor to serve our community and the opportunity to share. Thank you, Brett. Um, one more uh, thanks. I, I neglected to thank our amazing transportation department, especially our bus drivers, our bus aides and our mechanics. Um, they're the ones who are there every day, making sure our kids get to school safe, get home safe, um, and, and, and I know it's been a, a struggle and a strain for them, and I want to uh, extend my thanks to them as well. I forgot to do that in my, my remarks. Yeah, without a doubt. It, and as I was saying, it takes, it takes everyone. And that's why when it comes to the vaccination, they're in that pool. Um, we see it throughout the county. We see it almost daily in our schools. Um, people are affected by COVID-19 and the impacts of, of the pandemic. So, um, you know, this vaccination is incredibly important to so many people. Great, thank you, Brett. Uh, brings us down to 2D, treasurer and investment update. That would be uh, Mr. Stevens. Great, thank you and good evening. Uh, tonight we have the treasurer and investment update for the month of November, 2020. Uh, the current beginning balance in the general fund of 102 million, receipts for the month of two and a half million, disbursements of 13 million for an ending cash balance of 91 and a half million. Of the 91 and a half million, approximately 81 
2.2 is invested in a mix of uh, money market and our CDARS in, insured cash sweep accounts. Um, it's approximately 89% of the general fund cash balance. Very similar to last year in line with the trending. As we look at actual revenues and expenses, you'll see about $85 million of revenues came in, primarily our tax collection and state aid. Uh, expenses through November, actual expenses of $39.8 million, primarily associated with our salaries and benefits as well as BOCES expenses. The report for the month of November of 2020. Thank you, Matt. Um, and one other uh, item, if, if you could just briefly, I'm putting on the spot here, um, just update us in the community as to where we are with our capital improvement plan. I know we've met with our facilities committee, but just to let the community know where we are because they approved that over a year ago and we've been in the design stage. So if you could just speak to that for a minute, yep, are, you, are you prepared? Or? Yep, so the, the phase 1A, we'll call it, of the uh, $56.7 million project has been submitted to SED, the plans and specs for review. It's currently in the review process at the facilities planning department at state ed and uh, some comments back and forth with our architect engineer team and working with state ed on the first phase. And the second portion, so that first, that phase is the high school work. And the second portion, which would be all the other buildings, uh, the work at those buildings to take place that will be submitted to state ed in the near future. So that's going through the design phase, uh, user group meetings in terms of narrowing down the details of the scope work with each building, secure vestibules across the district at the buildings that don't have those at this point in time. Um, so that work's taking place now with the user groups. And once that's completed, it'll be submitted to state ed. Great, thank you, Matt. You got it. Any other comments or questions for Mr. Stevens? Yeah, Matt, just, I mean, just following on the, on the last description, we expect to submit this state ed. Um, how long do we think it's going to take to get their feedback returned? And then when do you think we're, we're going to make break ground? Do you think we're still on track? Uh, currently still on track. Yes. Yep. So, I mean, if the first phase with the high school that was submitted early December, um, and it's, it could, it could take anywhere from eight to 12 weeks for the review process. You know, the second phase has many more buildings to be covered, so we'd expect a similar timeline. So we're still anticipating a, a spring, um, early summer um, groundbreaking, and um, you know that that will be great and fun to see, and that will be a natural re progress report every month for the next year and a half. Yep. All right. So that that initial part for the construction work is the high school work that Mr. Probe yep. talking about with the late spring, early summer work. Begin. We and it are, I mean I, I know that you built contingency plans for disruption for the students and, and the staff. So I, I assume that you're working with Bob Clark and his staff to make sure that we um, can. So work. I, every you know what we'll do is without a doubt um, talk about you know what are the swing spaces that are going to be needed and you know where we're going to be playing our games for the next several. Um, if not several, you know, year, year and a half, um, how will this impact instruction? You know, these will be great topics in workshops and definitely board meetings as we move along. But it, it is, it's moving, it's moving along right on pace. It's really cool to see all the interactions occurring between SED. If there is really a, a body and head that is managing in, you know, and our construction in, in our construction management team to make sure that we have our, our I's dotted and our T's crossed, that it's um, coming exactly how we planned it, how it's going to be you know, coming out to bid probably, what do we say, February, um, mm -hmm. Mar you know, February, March. And, you know, you know, we'll have even more clarity on, on, on all those great questions. So it's, it's really, um, really nice to see it come, come, coming along and coming to fruition. And, and I don't want people to think that we haven't had conversations about swing space and where we're going to play games. That that was back in the initial planning of this. So two years ago, we did we did have conversation. Now it's time to fine tune these these different areas. So yeah, and, please don't please don't think we haven't thought of this, but because we have, it's all yeah. part of the plan. And just and to add to Mr. Slitz's comments, the schedule coordination has been discussed with the cafeteria at the high school, um, how that'll work in terms of the space there, swing space. Um, with science classrooms and so forth, so a lot of those conversations have had and have been have had have been done initially, and then it'll get done to fine tuning the. Schedule. 
Another reason why our cafeteria staff um, should be honored and celebrated because they're going to be doing business differently, um, you know, for multiple years. Um, in addition to what they're going through now, they'll be doing it, you know, in an alternative fashion. So um, more to report on that. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. That brings us to number three on our agenda, and that's the consent calendar, where we're the approval of the minutes, both the board meeting, the workshop, the treasurer's report for uh, November, the bid and surplus recommendations that we have all had uh, opportunity to view, audit and finance committee meeting minutes, which we met last week. And I would like a motion to approve the consent calendar, please. And I do ask you your uh, verbal, please. So moved, Damon. Second. Okay. Marty, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that's seven zero, thank you. And that brings us down to personnel actions. Number four, uh, with the instructional, I'm gonna ask Doug Loft to speak to that, please. Hi, Tim, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we have Hi. a number of appointments on the instructional agenda tonight. I'm just <clears throat> moving something on my way on the screen here. Uh, we have a probationary appointment and a number of long-term sub appointments. And um, I'm also happy to note, uh, without going through every line item, that we have added uh, with this agenda a number of per diem substitutes, which is good to see. So we're starting to uh, add more per diem subs to our pool uh, to cover as necessary, because that's been uh, an area where Fairport and a number of other districts have noticed uh, a shortage. So it's good to add 14 new subs uh, to the pool as well. So. Um, unless there's any questions about instructional, there's not really anything out of the ordinary, just hiring some, some great folks and appointing some mentors and, and other folks to really keep moving our work forward. Hey Doug, where, where are the, um, where are the pool of substitutes coming from? Do you have a trend there? Yeah, the one trend I can speak to is we have a number of subs that will show, as you can see on this agenda, as uncertified. Uh, they're, they're just finishing programs and they're all taking their tests and applying for certification. So although they're uncertified at the moment, 90% um, of these folks are in the process of getting certified. So right now they're uncertified, but hopefully most of them will be certified soon. And with the COVID flexibility we've been given from the state of New York, they're able to sub 90 days for the school year versus the 40 days previously if uncertified. Uh, but the trend has been more uncertified than certified. But like I said, they're in the process, most of these candidates of being certified. Great. Do they have a connection with Fairport in some way? Are they graduates or? They uh, uh, many, many do. Um, I've been in more communication with local universities recently. So I think that's been helpful. We're really growing that network. Um, yeah. So, you know, in my second year in this role, I've gotten to know more of the professors that oversee the education programs at the local colleges. So I think we're, we're really starting to rebuild that network and, and they're funneling people our way, which is great. Great, thanks, thanks Doug. Yep. Great, sure. thank you Doug. Okay, I need a motion please to accept the instructional. So move, Joyce. Second. Amen. Marty. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? And that carries. And uh, Doug, again, for the athletics, please. <clears throat> yep, athletics is pretty brief. We have two uh, volunteer coaches for the winter season that we're seeking approval for. Um, as always, our volunteer coaches are fingerprint cleared. Great. Motion, please. So moved, Marty. Second, David. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries, 7-0. Non-instructional civil service, please. Yep, we have a number of things on here. Uh, I guess what I'd really like to point out is uh, we have some retirements. So I'd really like to thank the folks uh, on here that are retiring a few people uh, sooner than later, but many of them right at the end of the school year. So I'd really like to recognize these folks for their dedication and commitment to our <coughs> district and community. And, and looking at those names, there are some of those names of people who have devoted decades to the district in many different capacities. And it, it, uh, it's 
sad to see them go and we appreciate all that they've done in their in their years in the district um, but it's also time to go on to a different part of life as I did a year and a half ago and it's okay thank you need a motion please uh, yeah go ahead just real quick are, um, are these retirements effective immediately or at the end of the year there's an effective date that speaks to okay, it's okay. different for each one okay yeah. right Sorry about that I just uh, my <clears throat> I hadn't, didn't see it it's okay yep I can't hear you so it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> I need a motion please so move Marty Second choice. All in favor? Aye. 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 Se uh, opposed? Okay, thank you. And that brings us down to a tenure. Doug? Yep, so we have Hannah Cummings tenure recommendation tonight. Um, normally our tenure recommendations for teachers are made in May, but uh, Hannah was kind of off cycle, if you will. Uh, she was unfortunately a victim of some of the cuts we made a few years back, but uh, luckily we were able to bring Hannah back. She's an outstanding elementary teacher at Brooks Hill. And um, with bringing her back and kind of the way that cycle went, her appointment is here tonight for your consideration and her date for tenure actually falls in February. So we're excited Great. to bring Hannah forth um, as a Raider forever, hopefully. Great. Okay, a motion, please. No move, Marty. Second choice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Brings us down to number five, board discussion action items. Um, as you heard me say in my report, uh, Judy O'Leary Sargent uh, resigned from our board due to uh, the fact that she and her family uh, moved to North Carolina for... Um, uh, a job change or job uh, promotion, I believe it was. So that created a vacancy on the board. And uh, we as a board of six interviewed um, a resident, longtime Fairport parent and resident, Arlette Miller-Smith. And I would like a motion, if we could please, to appoint Arlette Miller-Smith to fill out the remainder of Judy's term, which ends June 30th of this year. Do I have that motion, please? So moved, Peter. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All the discussion? Yes. I, th I think just, just a general observation, and, I, and I, I speak for myself, but the whole board, we talked to uh, Arlette on Saturday and uh, She's, you know, she'll, she'll be great for the board and I'm uh, really looking forward to having her join and working with us as a team. It's exciting. We spoke to, we spoke to her yesterday, Monday. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would, I would, I would like to echo your, your sentiments and say, Arlette, welcome to the board. Uh, and we look very forward to all that you will be able to bring and all of your expertise in your personal and your professional life. And we're very excited to have you as part of our board. Thank you so much. And with that, Arlette, I'm going to have the oath of office. If you would repeat after me, and it's very ironic because tomorrow uh, Joe Biden will be saying the exact same oath, except that he will not have this constitution of the state of New York in his. Or, Damon, just... or Damon asking <laughs> Yeah, or Damon asking a question. <laughs> but it's, it, it's very interesting true. that no matter what, what, public office that you are elected to in this country, we all take the same oath. Mm. And in New York state, if we're in a, in a school district or a town or, or, or village, we actually also have to part, have the part about the U, uh, New York state constitution. So if you're ready, I'll go slowly so that we can get this correctly. So I, Arlette Miller-Smith. I, Arlette Miller-Smith. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties. The duties. Of the office. Of the office. 
of the Board of Education. Of the Board of Education. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome aboard. We, we, are, we are looking forward to, to having you join us. Thank you so much. Right. Yes, come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> now you got to give your welcome speech. <laughs> I did that yesterday. <laughs> and our letter, please, if, if there's anything you'd like to say, please. Um, just, you know, it, it actually, as I keep saying, it's daunting and people keep saying, yes, but you know, you're just really up for the challenge. And said, well, let's, let's see. I love Fairport. I've been here since 1988. Both of my kids, you know, went through the schools and uh, I must say that, you know, they came out pretty much unscathed and have gone <laughs> on to, uh, you know, to do well uh, for themselves. And I'm very concerned about our students in terms of them being able, you know, to uh, go out into this world and definitely to help us to move forward as a country. Um, these really are very challenging times. I can't imagine um, the kind of energy and expertise and commitment that each of you bring on a daily basis um, to this job. It's just, um, it's, it's a priceless uh, kind of an endeavor and it's an endeavor that all of us, you know, need to commit ourselves to at some juncture in terms of doing something for our children. And it doesn't matter whether or not, you know, they're adult children who have moved on or whether they are students right now. I'm very aware of how important it really is uh, for us to be supporters uh, of these, you know, developing minds and, and bodies given uh, the structure of the kinds of days that we have right now in the, as I call it, the double pandemic. So I will do whatever it takes and whatever I have in terms of knowledge or love and patience. Um, and I'm not a very patient person. So I will work on that one more and more. My students will tell you I'm demanding, but I never ask for anything that I don't give. And so I'm here to serve. Thank you so much. We look forward to working with you and eventually meeting in person. <laughs> Thank you. Policy first read. Motion please to accept the policy first reads. Voice. And it's the school safety information security breach and notification committees of the board. Second. Second. Was that Erica second? It was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? I saw that there was a lot of a lot of edits on um, on a couple of these, the the security plan and the cybersecurity <laughs> plan. So just were those edits that were provided to us by BOCES or did, did you guys add those modifications? These, these were edits provided by our BOCES. Um, you know, there was also some pandemic planning pieces that were added as a result of the conditions of our world. Um, but these were legal edits for the most part. Okay. And then yeah. the, last, the last policy was around subcommittees. I didn't notice any changes there. Was the, is that a brand new policy? That's, um, that's been a policy that's been around and um, it was just up, up, up for- uh, Gotcha. Review. Okay. What that's, I've done, Damon, another, is- That's I've... another committee, that's another um, policy that's driven by SED guidance. Okay. What I've done, Damon, is I've gone through the policy manual and any policy that is at least five years old, um, where I'm bringing that, Ariel and I are kind of going through them and bringing those that need just to be quickly updated. Some need extensive updating, but those that we can look at quickly, a lot of them have uh, updates that are mandatory, like Brett said, through SED, so we don't really have any control over a lot of the updates. And those that we do have control over, we have been really uh, starting to look at those and piece those apart. And we also get uh, updates from the individuals in the district who are oversee the, the, those areas as well as from our legal department. Okay, all right, great, thanks. Yep. Okay, all in favor? 
Oh, well, Peter, I, did you do something? Yep, yes. I, I did have a question about this. I, I can't see you, so it's hard to, I can only see one at a time. I know, that, don't worry, I know how that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, the information security, right? That um, we have personal information and private information and student ID numbers, where do they fall in? Are they both or I assume they're protected? I would say that they would fall under both. That's a good question. Um, we, we don't list them specifically, which is why I wonder, but we do have just other identifiers or just numbers. And I assume that would be a student ID. I, I think part of the challenge I've heard having five kids in the district is the youth seem to be able to figure out each other's IDs. That doesn't make it very secure. Especially um, if some, you're siblings, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and some, sometimes it's simply because your friend gives it to you. Yes, they're not so secure themselves between youth. That's true. Right. But they see, we seem to have an algorithm, if I call it that, that makes it fairly identifiable. And I think that might pose a challenge to us as a district under this policy. But I, I don't mean to bring it up in terms of, well, I do bring it up for that, but also the policy. Do we word it sufficiently to cover student IDs? And then will we have a practice that supports that? Seeing as this is a you know, first, a lot of times though, if you if you put something like that in a policy that's so restrictive and narrow, um, and I think somebody said it, you know, kids will share their IDs, right? And um, if you put it in a policy that speaks to, you know, you know, thou shalt not have IDs exposed. I mean, that sets it up for. So you know, that's why we do have a code of conduct. That's why if you know if if identifications do get taken or infringed upon, we have practice to support that situation. So um, what, what, so uh, I think that's right. And more with regulation, what about our, our, I guess, algorithm for lack of a better word that, that creates an ID that's somewhat easy to crack. Right. Because it is, is it? Uh, I, th this is a question. I think policy is going to be meeting on Friday morning. Yeah. And because and because this is a first read, we can maybe bring this back. A number is generated when your first child essentially goes in. And then after that, it goes numerically. So there must be, yeah, some, like you said, Peter, some way of figuring that out. So if we can, like the specific question, I could work with Tom before then and, yep. you know, see how do we, what was the word you used? That was the right word, Peter. What was I just Algorithm. Lost Algorithm. Algorithm. Algorithm, thank you. Because got, it's a all all, confused, yeah. student student ID numbers are six digit numbers and they always have been. And and I'm guessing right. it's the same for the year you enter, maybe. That is that is that can be part of the <laughs> part of if the, I could figure it out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. So I, I will ask, how do we generate and how do we protect? Yep. Yeah. Is that accurate, Peter? Yeah, generate and then I think a uh, consideration of for siblings, then, is there um, enough uniqueness, right? So for those of us with larger families, right, if you if one sibling shares, now they know all five of them. Okay. And it's interesting because uh, student ID numbers are used more now because of the cards and the fact that they can scan their cards for lunch and they type in a number for lunch and, and they're using their numbers. Back 20 years ago, you didn't have a use for your numbers and so no one really knew them. But now that students have them and they know their ID number. It's that, for everything. That, yep, that, that does bring up that, uh, that point that you brought, Peter. Thank you. Thank Anybody you. else questions for discussion? Okay, a vote, please. Aye. All in favor? Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, that's 7-0. Policy read second. Or policy second read, excuse me. And if you could thank you, Brett. Um, and this we have gone over. We've worked on this in the policy committee. Um, I need a motion to accept these three as a second read, please. So moved, Marty. Second, Erica. Any discussion? Okay, vote please. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. 
Come on. There's no football game on tonight, I believe, right? No. <laughs> committee, committee of Special Education report given to us. Thank you. Uh, can I have a, a motion to approve this, please? So moved, Marty. Second, Second, Erica. Thank you. Any discussion? And a vote for uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? And the motion carries 7-0. Single audit report. Um, Matt, is there anything you'd like to speak on this? I just, uh, I just give a quick summary. It was reviewed in audit and finance. Uh, this is a report of our federal award money between our six, our, our special ed grants, our title grants, uh, as well as the money that comes in for being part of the national school lunch and breakfast program in the food service program. So about total of $2.8 million flow through here and are reported on by our auditors as they do their random sampling and review of the grant and expenditures. Great. Okay. Motion, motion to approve, please. So moved, Damon. Second. Second Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Extra classroom activity funds financial report. I know this was also discussed at our. Uh, uh, finance committee meeting. Uh, Matt, is there anything you'd like to speak uh, to on this? Uh, just, just to add here between our um, elementary and secondary buildings, we have over two hundred thousand dollars of cash floating through, flowing, flowing through these accounts. So, uh, kudos to all the hard work done at the building level between the students, the advisors, the extra classroom activity treasurers, and monitoring and tracking all of this. Overall, yep. the report was a positive report. Uh, with with minimal recommendations. Great. Can I ask a question, or do I need, should I wait let's, for the? Let's let's wait. Uh, I need a motion, please. I'll make a motion. Second. Second, Erica. Okay. Discussion, Pete. It's, it's, in this case, it's curiosity. The the German club, right, had a fifty thousand dollar inflow, no expense. I imagine this was was this trip related? As people yep. paid in. Are there not refunds granted to some of those or? Uh, we will, we can review at the high school level uh, in terms of refunds or, you know, depending on the, the grade level of the students, if they're looking to go in a future year and already have the funds in there. Matt, when was the report the generated? Uh, the report would be at year end of June. So if they hadn't made a decision okay. yet in terms of what they were going to do with any prior year monies collected. Right. Because usually that trip is in the summer. So we're usually very, they're very accommodating because of our relationship. And you know, just like we found out last spring, yeah, I mean, it takes work and sometimes it's a headache, but it, it works. The relationships are tried and true and um, we leverage them and, and, and they're very accommodating. I think it's a fair question. Yep. Yep. So can we, uh, would someone please investigate that and just get back to us, please? Matt would, would, yes, we'll Matt, would you be able to do that? Just yeah. look into that to see, because I'm, I'm guessing that some of that money may have been refunded since this report was generated. Yeah, it's possible. Well, we can look at the activity that's even happened right. today. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Any other comments or questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. That motion carries. Claims auditor reports. One more, Matt. It's the Matt show tonight. Yeah, so this mm -hmm. is the, the claims auditor reports for September through November. Um, you know, overall minimal findings, standard items in terms of voids and, and so forth for address corrections, um, the wrong amounts and so forth. So nothing, nothing alarming in terms of the items reported as a whole. And again, we, re, we the finance committee reviewed all this at our last meeting last week. And we also yeah, kudos to you and your team, you know, for know. communicating with all the advisors and, and, and secretaries who help manage the, the ground floor. I, you know, every single year that I've been around here, it's it's been a credit to the communication that occurs. Um, it's not easy, but you guys do a great job of managing it and communicating for the benefit of our kids. Thank you. And I need a motion, please. So moved, Marty. 
Second? Second. Second, Joyce. Second, Joyce. Uh, any other discussion? Always amazes me how many checks that our district writes in a month. <laughs> it just, it's amazing all that goes into running a school district. And how okay. few mistakes there are. Right. And, and yeah, exactly. And, and the village, I actually go through and look at all the bills and all this. So I do that, that monitoring. And uh, even that's a big stack. That takes a couple hours to go through. So I can only imagine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. That brings us down to number six, board comments. Um, I can ask for anybody who is on the board. There are five other members other than myself. Mm -hmm. Anybody like to comment on anything tonight? I, I would just like to share my experience tonight and why I was Thank you. afraid. Um, I think we all know from Brett's notes to us today was the National Day of Racial Healing. So I was able, maybe some of you were too, to watch that program from three to five. It's on YouTube. It was beautifully, beautifully done. Um, that was national. And then the follow-up to that was tonight at six until seven. I didn't stay for the final wrap-up, but it involved a restorative circle. We were in small groups for that. And it was just exquisitely done and gave me such hope for our community. Um, I did have the chance to say to Kelly, who will talk to us Saturday, I hope that she will bring some of that forward for everybody to experience Saturday because it was just a very powerful and positive experience. I wish we all could have been there. Marty, can you talk a little bit what made it so powerful? Well, I think um, the power of the restorative circle is unparalleled, really. Um, it, mine, it was led by a Fairport staff member, a teacher, and um, a representative from Peary, um, an associate group that we work with. And just the demeanor with which they conduct that, the sincerity with which they conduct it, and the honor and respect that they give to each person expressing their own thoughts and feelings, um, on the topics that we were discussing, which were racial justice primarily, um, was, was just so, so well done. It was so respectful. It gave space for people to share what they thought and felt and you know, just to honor one another and also to honor the diversity in our land and hold some hope for the future, which we're all wishing for at this point in time. Great. Thank you for sharing, Marty. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, yeah, Tim, I am signed up for the event tomorrow night. Um, and I, I don't have the title in front of me, but I apparently the the person from Rush Henrietta that's developing the curriculum is going to be Shane Wagon. Yeah, that's tomorrow from six to seven. So I think um, you know what? We just got an email that something's been changed. I think it's a different one. Okay, Simeon Bannister and Shane are doing something. It's a different one that's been changed to February. Oh, I, I yeah. shared that one with you before. That's a whole. That's another one. Okay. So, so that's that's not tomorrow's. Correct. Yeah. Tomorrow, okay. they said they, they would send an invite tomorrow before the event, so we could join via Zoom. Um, and I'm looking forward to to seeing, um, you know, the material and and just you know, understanding the curriculum modifications and additions that we'll be making in the district. So that's, that's really looking forward to that. And um, I do have one more, more question. And that is just, first of all, recognizing that more of our teachers and staff are getting immunized, right? And I think that's wonderful. Um, it's sort of happening, happening in, in an ad hoc kind of way, but <laughs> I don't know, Brett, if there's anything else that we can talk about from a district perspective around immunization or how we're keeping track of, of what's happening. And, you know, I, realize that it's I think it's just like anything else. First of all, I have to you know, tip my hat to Dr. Mendoza, his accessibility, um, his interest in making sure that educators are vaccinated. But saying that there is a shortage, you just can't get enough shots in arms. Um, and the governors expressed that. Um, and I think it's part of a national dialogue as well, but we're experiencing it right here. Um, we have teachers, or I should say educators, those who are in category 1B who are um, willing, um, able, and, and ready to do it. It's just um, appointments 
you can't get you can't get an appointment. I went to uh, to check the site out and sign up, um, just thinking you know I, I could you know get a shot in, in in March or April, but booked and you know that will change I think in a week or two um, as we get more access um, as they actually have the people to provide the shots. That's another piece, but it's not from a lack of the Mother County Department of Health. Um, they're great partners. Um, they're working diligently to try to increase access centers or depots where people can go. We're trying to find a way to, to, to um, advocate for an education, education shot center where between this time, you know, you go and, and receive your shot. Um, but, you know, th those are the things that are in the work. Um, again, right now it's, it is, it's frustrating because it's hit or miss. It's who's savvy with a computer, who can, you know, time it right. And that's not what you know we would have in mind. And I know um, it's it's on Dr. Mendoza's mind. And we're fortunate enough to hear from him weekly. And, and he was just sharing with us that very sentiment today. So um, stay tuned. We'll continue to communicate with our staff. I know that our educators um, associations are actively plugged into statewide networks of advocacy too. So um, they they understand what we need. It's just again, it's it's a supply issue. Yep. Got it. I was I was on the website yesterday uh, registering my mother and uh, everything was booked in this area. I, I know down downstate mm -hmm. in New York, there are a couple openings, but I didn't feel like taking a five hour drive. Um, and I know that Monroe County School Boards is also working, trying to figure out if there's some way we could have a you know, school school personnel. Uh, day of, of vaccination, but like like Brett said, there's just the vaccines just aren't there, and that was one of the governor's uh, discussions today as well. I have a question. What is the stance um, in terms of personnel who refuse to take the shot? Um, right, right now, um, you know, you can't mandate the shot. Um, you know, it's it becomes an ethical question. But mm -hmm. it is not a it's not a mandated component of of readiness right now. So. Right, right. Okay. Anyone else? Erica, Joyce, Peter. I'll just say welcome to Arlette. I'm. Be happy to work with her. I'm looking forward to it. I was sorry to see Judy go, of course, but I think we're very fortunate to have Arlette on board now with us. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Seeing as there are no other comments from board members, I will ask for, let me just see here, a motion to adjourn our meeting. So moved, Marty. Second choice. Any discussion? I know um, one more thing. Uh, uh, January 21st is the state of the town, district and village meeting. Um, I will be joining that under wearing both of my hats. I know Brett, you are planning on going to that, the virtual meeting. I'll be presenting, yep. Yes, okay. And that's, uh, it used to be at the Burgundy Basin for dinner, but it actually well, lunch, but that's gonna change because they've permanently closed. So who knows how that'll look in the future. So that will be uh, occurring. And um, then we have our board retreat on Saturday. And I'll be sharing that presentation with the board. Great. Thank That's you. That's great. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And we're all set? Great. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you back here in our February meeting. And uh, we will have a workshop between now and then. Thank you for joining. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.